ஜனாச்சலாக்கா சக்ஷுரு மிலிதம் ஜேனா தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீகுரவே நம ஸ்தாபிதாயேனூதலேயம்ருபாகதாமையம்தாத்திஸ்வாபதிக்கம்ந்தேஹம்ீகுரீகுதாபதமலம்ீகுரும்ஷ்ணவாஸ்ரீக
is Goloka, Krishna Loka, the place where Sri Krishna, with his eternal pleasure potency, Sri Radha, enjoys pastimes forever with their limitless devotees. In the sweetest, most intimate, ecstatic love. Namo Mahabhara Nyaya Krishna Prem Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaurat Vishena Srimad Bhagavatam declares that there are many incarnations like waves in an ocean throughout history. Krishna's Ete Changsha Kalapongsha Krishna's Tu Bhagavan Soya All these incarnations are expansions manifesting the the partial opulences of Sri Krishna. It is in Goloka that Krishna manifests the purest, highest, fullest opulence. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to teach us. In Goloka, there is forever limitless loving relationships between the Lord and his own personal expansions. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is inviting us to our eternal home. We think of a home as a place with a family, a loving family. Because if our family isn't loving, sometimes we run away from home. (laughs) Or we find any excuse to be away from it. Even if they're loving, but they don't really know how to express their love properly, still, it's not a very pleasing environment. But for the Jivatma, Mamaivam so Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana, we're all part of Krishna. This is a repeated message of Sri Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. When we realize our own eternal spiritual nature, Krishna is vibhu, he's limitless. And the jivatma is anu, in a very small particle. Our acharyas give us the analogy of the sun planet. Krishna is like the sun. And we are all like individual personal sun rays. But that is not a small estimation. Because when we understand the achintya, the inconceivable opulences of Krishna, even a single sun ray could light up universes. That's Krishna's power. In the sunshine, We don't see sun rays fighting with each other. We don't see one sun ray trying to take credit and pushing down another in order to get it. Because every sun ray, nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yogadadati kama. Every single sun ray knows that They're simply instrumental to the blessings and the grace of the sun planet and completely dependent upon the sun planet. Janman Yashayataha. Krishna declares in Bhagavad Gita, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Mata Sarvam Pravartate. 
I am the source of all spiritual and all material worlds. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Everything, everyone emanates from Krishna. He sarva karana karanam, the cause of all causes. He's the Vishaya Vigra, the supreme object of all love. Sri Radha is the supreme Ashray Vigraha, the supreme lover, the abode of love. The pastimes of Sri Sri Radha Krishna in Goloka is the full, ultimate, supreme source and perfection of all love. At the jivas, we are simply made, we are created beyond time or space for the purpose of being a part of that love. Satchitananda can be understood that when, when we realize our role as a part of that love between Sri Radha and Krishna, the happiness, the ecstasy is so great, so deep, that there's simply nothing else we could, nothing else we could desire except to ever increasingly give pleasure to Sri Sri Radha Gopinath. When we understand the nature of that love within our heart, there can be no envy. There can be no material attachment. There's only the desire to serve, only desire to please Krishna, because that is the ultimate happiness. Rupa Goswami explains that the happiness of mukti, of liberation, is like a drop compared to the shoreless, bottomless ocean of happiness in engaging in the loving service of the Supreme Personality of God. To the, to the extent we appreciate that, Bhagavad Gita teaches we begin to see everyone with equal vision. Not that we don't discriminate between what is moral and what is immoral, what is selfish and what is unselfish, what is arrogant and what is humility, what is material, what is spiritual. But we see every living being as a child of Krishna, a part of Krishna, in their essential nature. Sarva Loka Maheshwaram and we see everything that exists as Krishna's property. Therefore we simply want to serve. And those devotees of the Lord while they are in this material world the pure devotees, the Paramhamsas and there are various levels of devotees. Sincerely, they simply want to reflect the light of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of Krishna's mercy in this world. Therefore, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, understanding that bhakti is the love between the Lord and the devotees and the love between the devotees and each other. He's constantly worshipping devotees. Here, before describing the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's Jaya Sri Chaitanya Chandra Bhakta Chandra Gan. He's giving all glorification to the moons of the devotees and to the, to the original moon of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
They are giving light to each other and light to the world. And Srila Prabhupada explains this is the purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement to illuminate the world with Krishna praying love for Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he appeared in Sri Navadvip Dham on this particular day the full moon night of the month of Palgun. We celebrate as Gaur Purnima. He resided within Navadvip Dham for 24 years. During the latter part of that he established the Sankirtan movement. In fact, he would he would say about his devotees how they were so much better, better than him. When he was young as Nimai Pandit, he established himself as the greatest scholar in the entire world. Even Brihaspati, the guru of the devas, could not fathom his knowledge of the scriptures, his logic. Keshav Kashmiri, the Digvijay Pandit, who was the world most renowned debate champion, was easily defeated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But what was the way Lord Chaitanya defeated? His defeat was transformation. For somebody who is that proud as he was, he was personification of arrogance. The more contaminated we are by arrogance, the more it hurts when we don't get the prestige that we think we deserve. If Lord Chaitanya would have publicly defeated him too bad, he would have died. But but Nimai did it in such a subtle way. He, He was just bewildered. He wasn't so hurt. He was just bewildered. How does this little grammar, this this young teenage grammar teacher, how did he defeat me like that? And how in his presence I was completely speechless. I couldn't talk. Gada Saraswati gave me the benediction that she would always be on my tongue to eloquently express whatever's in my mind. But in the presence of this boy, I couldn't say a word. Nimai's students laughed when they saw him completely defeated. And Lord Chaitanya told them not to laugh. He did not want to embarrass him too much. But when he went home and went to sleep, his own beloved goddess Saraswati appeared to him to inform him, whatever knowledge I have, I receive from Nimai. (laughs) He's the supreme absolute truth. He's the cause of all causes. You should go and surrender to him. That's the purpose of all knowledge. Whatever knowledge I've given you of logic and Vedas, whatever power I've given you to speak, it's not for the purpose of being victorious. It's for the purpose of learning how to love Krishna, teaching others how to love Krishna. That Vedaishta said of Eraham, Eva Vedyo Vedantakrit Veda Vedeva Chaham. You are so fortunate. When I gave you this boon, 
my whole purpose was eventually you would get love of Krishna from Lord Chaitanya. So the real benediction is you have seen him face to face and you have been defeated by him. Now go and surrender. That's what all the knowledge I've taught you is for. All of his arrogance was gone forever. He became more humble than a plate of grass. And he went and surrendered to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met Ishwara Puri in Navadweep, he accepted defeat from him. At the house of Gopinath Acharya, Ishwara Puri was residing. And every day he would speak about Krishna. Gadadhar Pandit would go all the time. Gadadhar became so dear to Ishwara Puri. And Lord Chaitanya would come and listen. One day Ishwara Puri told my I'm writing this book and I'm writing it for the benefit of the people in general and the devotees pleasure please read through it and correct whatever mistakes there may be Nimai he said you are a lover of Krishna it would be an offense to me for me to correct anything you write. Because whatever one speaks or does in love for Krishna, without arrogance, without selfishness, it's perfect. Even if materially, it may be very imperfect and there may be mistakes. It's, it's perfect. Because it's for Krishna. Sam Siddhir Hari Toshanam. Sam Siddhir. Siddhi means perfection. Sam Siddhir means all perfections. The perfection of whatever we do, the true perfection, is it pleases Krishna. So even if it's done not in such a materially expert way or if it's done in a very material expert way, we should try to do everything as expert as possibly for Krishna, whatever we are, whether we're cleaning, whether we're washing, whether we're doing puja, whether we're speaking, chanting, raising our families, doing our occupations, managing, whatever it may be, if it's done for the pleasure of Krishna. And Krishna is pleased. That's perfection. And those who have wisdom, they understand that. Those who are still plagued by material attachments and ignorance, they evaluate things simply on the basis of material appearance. Victory, defeat, Jatayu was victorious and Ravana was defeated. Although from a material perspective it was the opposite. And that's the difference between a material person and a devotee. We see everything in that lens. But what pleases Krishna is our perfection. So Nimai told Ishwara Puri that everything you do is perfect. But Ishwara Puri was very humble. He didn't say, yes, that is true. <laughs> he said, whatever you're saying about pure devotion is certainly true. But still, please correct what I'm saying, what, what's in this book. And Nimai came back the next day and said, I found a mistake. And Ishwarapuri listened, 
accepted it. The next time Nimai came, Ishwara Puri said, I've been thinking about it. Actually, it's not a mistake, it's correct. <laughs> we have read about Nimai Pandit's way of debating. There was no end to what he could do. The greatest scholars on the planet, they would assemble in Navadweep, and Nimai would establish a truth and say, please defeat this. They would say, it cannot be defeated. <laughs> then Lord Chaitanya would go through an elaborate refutation, minute details of logic, of philosophy, of Shastric evidence to defeat what he said. Then he said, now you already said it can't be defeated, but it's been defeated, so if it really can't be defeated, reestablish what I originally said. (laughs) They said, it cannot be reestablished. And he would give an eloquent explanation to defeat how he defeated and established the original statement. And he would say, now refute that. And all they could do was run away. (laughs) Because that would have just gone on. Whatever he said was on indescribably full of knowledge and wisdom. That's Nimai. But when Ishwara Puri, he didn't challenge him in a debate. He just said, Nimai, you're wrong. What I said is right. Nimai said, you are correct. I was wrong. That's amazing. So graciously he accepted defeat from a devotee. In Bhagavad Gita 11th chapter, Krishna manifests the Virat Rupa, the universal form. Even the greatest warriors like Bhishma, Drona, Karna, Maharatis, they're like little insects being destroyed by the fire of Krishna's power, of the Virat Rupa's power. Arjuna is saying this. Arjuna, those who were far more powerful than even him, were being exterminated effortlessly by the millions. Who could stand before the Virat Rupa? Undefeatable, Achuta, Ajita. But yet, the source of Virat Rupa, Virat Rupa is just a little expansion of Krishna. And he's tied around the waist by Yashodamai. In fact, he runs away and cries and says, I'm defeated, please don't. <coughs> Don't be angry with me. <coughs> to Sri Dhamma and the Gopas, they defeat him in wrestling. And just to show the world forever that I'm defeated by my devotee, he carries the Gopas on his back, which is the way of publicly announcing your defeat. And he takes greater pleasure being defeated by Sri Dhamma and bound by the rope of Yashoda than he does as Parasaram defeating generations and generations of the Kshatriyas. Or Mahavishnu who just inhales and annihilates the entire cosmic manifestation. And for the gopis, simple cowherd girls, they just love Krishna. They're not constructing big skyscrapers. They're making garlands. They're dancing. 
They're cooking nice preparations. They're milking cows. Very simple, ordinary things that almost anyone can do. They're doing it with such love. Krishna tells, even in an entire lifetime of Brahma, I cannot repay you with all that I have for your love and devotion to me. Krishna, who is the proprietor of everything that exists, says, I, I have no wealth that can compare to your love for me. So how can I repay you? Premadhan. Love is the true treasure. Krishna establishes it in this particular verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto. He said, please, gopis, just be satisfied with that love itself. Because that is the highest treasure. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give the world this treasure. And how did he do it? Krishna revealed the spiritual world through his loving relations with the bridge bhasis. And similarly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did with his devotees. He accepted defeat from his devotee, Ishwara Puri. And soon after that, he took initiation from Ishwara Puri. The supreme absolute truth was massaging his, the feet of his guru, massaging his legs, cooking for him, cleaning for him, receiving instructions from him. Lord Chaitanya did not go out and preach the glories of the Sankirtan movement until he received the order of Ishwara Puri to do so. He proudly proclaimed to Prakashananda Saraswati in Varanasi that my guru called me a fool. He said, I, I cannot understand Vedanta. I should just chant the holy names of Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya said, I accepted that I was a fool, so I just chanted Hare Krishna. Because he was asked, why aren't you studying Vedanta with us? Why are you with all these sentimental common people just chanting and dancing? Anybody could do that. You are sannyasi, the Shankar Sampraday, Bharati line. You should be with us. You will not find any sannyasi in our line chanting and dancing with common people. Impossible. What are you doing? This is nonsense. Come. He was being chastised very nicely because Prakashananda Saraswati was a, he was very much attracted by Lord Chaitanya's effulgence and his humility. Lord Chaitanya said, I can't do it. My guru said, I'm a fool because I am a fool. So I just started chanting and then when I was chanting, I don't know, I was what was happening? I started crying and my hair started going up and straight and my body started trembling. And I went to my guru. I said, what is this mantra doing to me? <laughs> I'm becoming mad. My guru, Dave, told me, I'm very happy, my child. You have attained the perfection of life. Love for Krishna. Now go throughout the world and share this Hare Krishna mantra, Krishna's holy names, and give this ultimate perfection of Krishna Prem. And he gave me a beautiful verse. Harinama, 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 Eva, Keva, Long, Kalona, Steva, Nasteva, Nasteva, Gataram. So I am carrying out my Guru's order. But if you want to discuss Vedanta, let us discuss. <laughs> yeah. 
And when Lord Goranga discussed Vedanta, Vedaishya Saravera Hame Vedo Vedanta Krit Vedivadeva Cham, all Vedanta, he's the author of all Vedanta. He's the knower of all Vedanta. And all by all the Vedas, only he is to be known. He spoke with such eloquence that Prakashananda Saraswati and all of those other sannyasis, they were totally defeated. Just by hearing from him, they never heard anything like this. Nobody could speak like this. It's beyond human capacity. But still, because they were faithful to what they represented, they had to at least try. (laughs) But every time they tried, their arguments were very humbly and sweetly crushed to pieces. (laughs) And ultimately they accepted, you are the supreme personality of Godhead and whatever you're saying is true and all of these impersonal conceptions that we learned we now understand how hollow and shallow they are compared to the Vaishna philosophy of pure ecstatic love for Krishna. And ultimately, they realize the conclusion of all knowledge is to love Krishna and to chant his holy name. When Lord Chaitanya returned from Gaya Dham to Puri after taking initiation, he received the order of Ishwara Puri and he began to teach everyone and anyone he would see the glories of the Sankirtan movement. The sadhya and the sadhana, the process and the goal, are one. Sadhya means the goal, sadhana means how we reach that goal. Golokera Prama Dana Harinam Sankirtana. This chanting of the holy names of the Lord is an eternal pastime taking place in Goloka Vrindavan. And through this chanting, our sadhana, we can actually attain the perfection of eternal residence in Goloka Vrindavan. At Sri Vasangam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would chant with his devotees throughout the day. And then one day he said, we should not waste time sleeping at night. (laughs) The kirtan should continue all night long, every night for the next one year. The devotees just said, Jai. (laughs) This is what pleases you. This is what we will do. And this is what they did for one full year, all day and all night. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught them how they could do this. Chant constantly. Trinara pisuni chena taror iva sehishnana amanina mana dena kirtaniya sadahari. If we remember this verse 24 hours a day for the rest of eternity, we will be very fortunate. It's so deep, it's so profound. Kirtaniya Sadahari, we could chant the names constantly, forever, with love, if simply we become humble.
more so than even a blade of grass. Tolerant, like a tree. With the principle in our life that our real success is not how we're respected by others, but how we offer respect to others. That's not easy in a world where everyone has different opinions. We all want to be recognized. That's natural. But a Vaishnava devotee wants to be recognized in a way that brings glory to Krishna, not to themselves. Krishna, in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his favorite pastime was to glorify his devotees. Lord Chaitanya was Kirtaniya Sadahari. He was always glorifying his devotees. And the devotees are Kirtaniya, Kirtaniya Sadahari. They're always glorifying Lord Chaitanya. And an inseparable way that they're glorifying Lord Chaitanya is by glorifying each other. That's what this verse we're reading today is about. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is glorifying every devotee as being a moon who is inseparably reflecting the light of the supreme moon of Sri Chandra. During the beautiful pastime of the deliverance of Chandukazi, after Lord Chaitanya told the common people of Navadweep, chant Hare Krishna. Chant the names of Krishna. Whether you're working in your shops or walking down the street, whether you're eating, sleeping, whether you're with your family, your friends, all alone, chant Krishna's names, worship Krishna, hear Krishna's glories and pastimes. Krishna is the real treasure of life. He's your very life and soul. And as they were chanting, Lord Chaitanya would go from place to place and he would bow down to the devotees who was chanting. The absolute truth is bowing down to simple sweepers at the ghats, selling little clay pots in the marketplace, or bananas, to Brahmins, chanting the Vedas. He would put garlands around them with his own hands. He would decorate them with chanda and sandalwood pulp. He's so grateful to anyone who would just receive his message and share it with others. So devotees were, everyone became devotees. They were so enthusiastic. John Kazi, who happened to be the official law enforcer of the Mughal king, Nawab Hussein Shah, he outlawed any any public demonstration of what he, he considered faithless Hindu rituals. But now, thousands of people in all directions were chanting fearlessly. Very difficult. He sent armies to torture them, arrest them, beat them, plunder their, their belongings. He even personally came and near Srivasangam and infuriated he broke the Murdanga against the ground. 
Lord Chaitanya told the people of Navadweep, today time personified will stand before Chandkasi. Let, him, let us see what he does to me. Everyone bring a torch before the sun sets and we will have a procession of Harinam Sankirtan from my house to the house of Jankazi. Thousands and thousands of people assembled and Lord Chaitanya chanted and danced. And eventually, after John Kazi saw the power of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and spoke to him, he surrendered and made a law. It was a completely opposite law. The law was no one's allowed to chant Hindu names of God or perform any ritual after he talked with Lord Chaitanya, not out of force, but out of love, he was transformed. It began with force. (laughs) When he saw hundreds and thousands of people coming to his house, that was a pretty forceful, um, very persuasive act of Lord Chaitanya. But that's what it took to open his heart. For Prakashananda Saraswati, Lord Chaitanya sat in the place where the Mayavadis would wash their feet. And seeing that humility, it opened the heart of Prakashananda Saraswati to hear what he was going to say. With Chankazi, he wasn't so brahminical. He was a political leader with armies at his disposal. So Lord Chaitanya opened his heart by coming with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. And when they got to John Kazi's house, tens and thousands of people were saying, destroy his house, destroy him, the John Kazi. And he looked for his military and they were all hiding in fear. (laughs) And his house was surrounded. There was nowhere he could go. So what did he do? He hid. He hid in his house. Lord Goranga came and said, where is he? (laughs) And when he came down, he said, why are you hiding from me? I'm a guest at your house. Why are you not giving me hospitality? And Shankazi said, because you are in a very angry mood and these people are also very angry mood. <laughs> and he was afraid. He said, actually, um, I was good friends with your grandfather. I was like a son to him. So therefore, I'm like your uncle. Because in the village, the friend of our, the son of your grandfather is considered your uncle. So, nephews should forgive uncles. (laughs) And Lord Chaitanya was so kind. He said, yes, you are my uncle. (laughs) And then he spoke and Hearing the philosophy of Vaishnav teachings from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Chankazi became completely transformed and surrendered. Sharanagati. And then he changed the law. The first was no Hindu right and no Sankirtan. It's illegal. And he was actually severely punishing anyone who was publicly doing Sankirtan. And now he made the law that as long as myself is ruling or any of my descendants, we will give full support and protection to all of your devotees who are chanting the holy name. (laughs) 
still there were people who were seeing Lord Chaitanya as an ordinary person. And they were criticizing him. At one point, some young Brahmins were even threatening to beat him. So then Lord Chaitanya decided to take sannyas. He told Lord Nityananda Prabhu that we have descended to this world to cure the disease of Kali Yuga. But the very medicine we've come to give these people to cure that disease is causing the disease to get even worse. And they're attacking the doctor. <laughs> We've come to cure the disease of, of uh, illusion, ignorance, forgetfulness of Krishna. And now people are criticizing. Therefore, I will shave my head and become a sannyasi. And anyone who sees me will then bow down. And when they bow down, they will be delivered because I'm the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> they will open their hearts to receive my mercy. Now they're just thinking, no matter what I do or what I say, they're just thinking, he's a grihasta just like us. He's younger than us. He's like our nephew. How can we take him seriously? But if I become sannyasi, then they will have to take me seriously. That's the way the culture was in India in those days. On Makara Sankranti, he left his home. In the early, early morning, went to Katwa and become sannyasi. The residents of Navadweep, everyone was stunned with grief. Sachi Mata, when Lord Chaitanya left home that early morning, he asked her permission. And she just stood as motionless as a carved statue. The only movement was the incessant tears pouring from her eyes. Her motherly heart was totally broken. She was a widow. Her husband had died. Her eldest son had taken sannyas and never, she never heard a word from him in years and never would. She only lived for her Nimai. And now he's leaving home. All the devotees were grief stricken. And when the news spread in Navadweep, even the most offensive people who would criticize Lord Chaitanya, philosophically, logically, enviously, even they could not tolerate the pangs of separation from him. It was such a jolt. He took sannyas. It woke them up to really evaluate what he, what he was teaching and who he really was. It worked. It was a hard dose of medicine, but it really cured the illness. For the devotees, that feeling of separation, which is inseparable from union in the realm of prem, of love, served only to increase 
the presence of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu deep in their hearts and thus increase their love. Lord Goranga had left. Eventually, he met with Sachi Mata and the devotees in Shantipur. And Sachi Mata requested that he live in Puri. You are going to Vrindavan, but it's so far away. How will we live? In Puri, we will hear your pastimes. And devotees come back and forth from Navadweep to Puri regularly, so I will hear about you. I could send you prasad. Lord Chaitanya, in obedience to his mother's desire, subordinate to her love and that of the devotees, made his residence in Puri. And just as he would have all night kirtan at Srivas's house, he would do the same on the shore of the ocean. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur describes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would see the moon rising from the sea. The beautiful rays of the moon would sparkle and dance on the waves of the sea. In his ecstatic love in the mood of Sri Radha, he would see the sea as the river Yamuna. And just as Sri Vasangam was the place of the Ras Lila in Navadweep, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would dance by the sea and call his devotees Nityananda Prabhu. At that time, Gadadhar Pandit became the inseparable friend of Lord Chaitanya. They were practically together constantly. They would sit together. They would sleep sometimes together in the same rooms. They would talk together. They would walk together. They would eat prasad together. And especially they would discuss Srimad Bhagavatam together. As Gadadhar Pandit would recite the Srimad Bhagavatam to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would weep. Sometimes hours and hours and hours at a time, every single day. Gadadhar Pandit would recite the Srimad Bhagavat with such sweetness and devotion. It is said that Swarup Damodar Goswami, the special feature of him is how he would completely conquer Lord Chaitanya's heart through his sweet kirtans. Gadadhar Pandit through his recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya, every night, practically all night, he would have kirtan on the seashore with his devotees. Paramananda Puri, he conquered the Lord's heart through his meditation. It's interesting, because in Krishna's Leela, Paramananda Puri is Udav. And Sri Radharani chastised Udhav <laughs> that Krishna is giving sending you with this message that we should meditate on him Krishna has gone to Mathura he's left us in separation and now he's sending you to come and tell us we should meditate on you we are not yogis that meditate like this we want to dance with you we want to cook for you. We want to make garlands for you. We want to serve you. We are drowning in an ocean of separation from you. 
We're being swallowed by the timangala fish of our aspiration to serve you and please you. And you're telling us to meditate. Please come home to Vrindavan. That was the mood of Sri Radha when Uddhav came. And now Lord Chaitanya is Krishna in the mood of Sri Radha and Paramananda Puri is Uddhav and Lord Chaitanya is completely captivated by Paramananda Puri's meditation. <laughs> Paramananda Puri is a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. He's not doing some impersonal meditation. He's meditating on Krishna. He's meditating on Krishna's names and Krishna's qualities and Krishna's pastimes. Smaranam. One day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the mat or the monastery of Paramananda Puri. They would speak about Krishna together. Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu asked Paramananda Puri, I see that you have a well. Is the water in your well nice? Paramananda Puri said, It's full of mud. It's very polluted. It's useless. It's actually terrible. No one could drink it. No one can even use it. When Lord Chaitanya heard this, he said, Lord Jagannath, Why are you being miserly? You know that if anyone drinks the water from the well of a great saintly devotee like Paramananda Puri, they will be purified, they will be liberated, they will get love of Krishna. And because love of Krishna conquers you, therefore you've made the water so muddy that nobody will drink it. Nobody will even touch it. Lord Jagannath, I pray for one benediction. Call Mother Ganga to come and fill this well of Paramananda Puri. The devotees who were assembled heard this. They were struck with wonder. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to take rest at Gambira, and all the devotees left. That night, while no one was around, Mother Ganga took the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as her life and soul. Lord Jagannath ordered her. <laughs> and she filled the well of Paramananda Puri. The next morning when Paramananda Puri came, the water was crystal clear. It tasted like nectar. It was beautiful. And all the devotees came running to see it. They called Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya was so happy. He raised both of his arms. He said, anyone who touches, who sees, who bathes in or who drinks the water from Paramananda Puri's well will attain love for Krishna. This is how dear Paramananda Puri is to Sri Krishna. After some time, Lord Chaitanya decided to go to Vrindavan. Interestingly, because Lord Chaitanya was performing kirtan on the banks of the sea and was every day bathing in the sea with his devotees, Mother Ganga, who was feeling intense separation from Lord Chaitanya's association, where she was always serving him in Navadweep. And Mother Yamuna, who was feeling intense separation from Krishna because she was eternally serving him in Vrindavan, 
they both rushed very rapidly to merge into the sea so they could be serving Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his devotees there. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the devotees he would be going to Vrindavan. The devotees tried to stop him in so many ways because they couldn't bear the idea of separation from him. But ultimately when they saw that he wanted to go so bad, his desire prevailed over every other consideration. So they gave, he wouldn't go without their permission and blessings. Please know that about five, many years had passed. After taking sannyas, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Puri. He spent about two years traveling throughout South India. He was back in Puri, and now he was expressing his desire to go to Vrindavan. They said, we, we will give permission if we could come with you. <laughs> so they all went with him. When Gadadhar Pandit was leaving, Lord Chaitanya said, no, no, you cannot go because you have taken a vow of Chaitra Sanyas, which means you never leave the place of your deity, Tota Gopinath. You can't leave the seva. Puja of Gopinath. Gadadhar Pandit said, You are Gopinath. <laughs> wherever you, wherever I serve you, I'm serving Tota Gopinath millions and millions of times. He couldn't bear the separation of Lord Chaitanya. said, the hell with my chaitra sannyas. <laughs> the concept is sarva dharman purityasya mame kam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva papibyo moksha isha me masaja. We should abandon all varieties of religion, varnashram, dharma, all these dharmas, and just surrender to, the, to Krishna. And you are Krishna, so I'm surrendering to you. Lord Chaitanya said, but I'm asking you to stay with Gopinath. He said, okay, I'm not going with you. I just want to go see Mother Sachi again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not your fault. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I will become offensive to Gopinath if because of me you're leaving him. He said, it has nothing to do with you. So he was from a distance, he was coming. And while Lord Chaitanya was dancing and chanting with all of the devotees, and when they finally came to the outer precincts of Puri, where there was a river to cross, there Lord Chaitanya told Gadadhar, you must go back. Gadadhar fell unconscious. Lord Chaitanya told Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, that please bring him back to Totu Gopinath Temple. Lord Chaitanya left. He crossed the river. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, you are to Gadadhar Pandit when he awakened. He said, you are so fortunate. He's not abandoning you. It's because of his love. He's trying to protect you. He's trying to protect your religious principles. It may appear that he was harsh and he was chastising. But that's because he loves you. How dear, how intimate you are to him. Gadadhar Pandit went back. Meanwhile, when Prataparudra Maharaj found out that Lord Chaitanya was going to Brindaban, from Ramananda Rai. He arranged practically the whole treasury of the kingdom to make arrangements for Lord Chaitanya and all the devotees. As long as Lord Chaitanya was within his Orion kingdom, he arranged 
wherever there were hungry, he would set up kitchen. And every step that Lord Chaitanya took, the crowd following him was growing. It went from just the devotees in Puri, his intimate associates, to hundreds, and then to thousands, and then to tens and thousands. And Pratapa Maharaj was cooking for everybody. Sometimes in jungles, sometimes in fields. He was setting up kitchens, he was setting... We have our Yatra committee. <laughs> have you ever seen how that's organized? It's quite amazing. They have trucks from Mumbai. And they send the trucks. Soon they'll be sending them to Mayapur. They send them to Vrindavan. They sent them to all these different holy places in South India. And with all the pots and with all the bhoga. Then they have their then they have to set up kitchens sometimes in, in, in an abandoned field, in a paddy area. They have to get permission from people to dig up their land and make a whole kitchen that's going to feed five or 6,000 people twice a day. Well, here, King Pratapurutra, he didn't have trucks how they carry these gigantic pots to cook for tens and thousands of people a day. A lot of management. A lot of purchasing. A lot of cooking. (laughs) And he would arrange accommodations for everyone every night, wherever they happened to stop. It was according to his capacity. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to see Mother Ganga. So he went to Navadweep with his followers. It's quite amazing. He would walk on the road And the roads then were just dust and dirt. And wherever he would place his feet, people wanted to take the dust of his feet. And because there were tens and thousands of people, when Lord Chaitanya was walking, he would walk through a village, and everyone in the village would see his beautiful golden form. They would hear him chanting, They would receive his merciful, lotus-eyed glance. They just wanted to be with him. They left their homes. They forgot about their wives. They forgot about their husbands. They forgot about their children. They forgot about their parents. They forgot about their homes. They didn't even close their doors. They just went and followed him. Wherever he's going, we're going. And everyone who saw him just joined the party. And they were all trying to get the dust. So wherever he put his feet, within seconds, there was big holes in the road. (laughs) In Kumarahata, when Lord Chaitanya went there, the birthplace of Ishwarapuri, he took some dust from that place and carried and put it in a little cloth to take with him. He said, the dust from the birthplace of my Guru Maharaj is sacred. It's holy. And he would eat a little of that dust every day. That story is there in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita describes the glories of Kumarata. So since then, so many people have gone to take dust from that place that now it's a lake. (laughs) We have been there several times in our yatras. It became such a gigantic hole, deep hole. 
Millions of people have taken the dust from there. And then during the monsoon season, the hole fills up and now it's a full lake. People bathe there. (laughs) So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he arrived in Vidyanagar, in Sri Navadvip Dham on the banks of the river Ganga, he went to the home of Vidyavachaspati, who was the brother of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, one of the dear most loving associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from Jagannath Puri. There was no advanced warning. It's not like there was an email that I'm coming. One day, Vidyava Chaspati was just doing his puja like any day, and suddenly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is at his doorstep. This is incredible. This is inconceivable. He was celebrating in ecstasy. He was weeping. He, was, he, he fell down in full prostration at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered beautiful prayers, brought him into his house, arranged a nice elevated seat for him, arranged the best of prasad, everything. He was so happy. After he offered his prayers, Lord Chaitanya said, I'm on my way to Mathura in Vrindavan, and I want to rest here for just a few days. I've come here alone, because so many people are following me. I don't want anyone to know I'm here. Please keep it a total secret so nobody knows. Vidya Vachaspati said, no one will know that you are here. I give you my word. You stay here as long as you want and you rest and you will have nice seclusion. So a little time passed. But Vrindavan Das Thakur explains, how long can you keep the noonday sun concealed? <laughs> little by little, the word spread that Lord Goranga has returned to Navadvi. It was little by little for a few seconds. <laughs> After that, it spread like a wildfire. And the majority of the people of Navadweep, they were feeling so much separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He had been gone for over five years. But to speak of the people who were offensive to him, who just considered him an ordinary person. After he took sannyas, they realized he's actually the supreme personality of Godhead. He was living with us, and we could not appreciate him. And now he's gone, and he's gone forever. They were starving. They were hungry in separation. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has returned to Navadweep. They never thought this was possible. Large crowds started running to the house of Vidyavachaspati. The crowd swelled up to hundreds and thousands of people. They were coming from all directions. And there were such large masses of people all going also in the same direction. They had to go through forests. They were being pricked by thorns, but they didn't even feel it. That's how enthusiastic they were to see Lord Chaitanya, to worship Lord Chaitanya, to, to offer their prayers and surrender their hearts to Lord Chaitanya. Even vast areas of thorny bushes and jungles 
we're all leveled to be gigantic pathways just by the force of the motion of hundreds and thousands of people like one big column moving forward. There was nothing that could obstruct, obstruct them. But then they came to Mother Ganga. And we know in Navadvipdam, Ganga is very forceful and very wide especially in those days, before dams and all of that. The Ganga was flowing. In those days there were crocodiles. The current was so swift. And like most people in India, they didn't know how to swim. (laughs) And to get to Vidyavachaspati's Residents, they had to cross the Ganga. So suddenly all the boatmen of Navadweep, they were thinking, oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> we never have such customers. They'll give us anything and everything to go. So the boats assembled, but they didn't know what was going to happen. Suddenly, hundreds and hundreds of people would jump on the same little boat. <laughs> Thousands of people would go on the big boats and the boatmen would pay us something and these, many of these people were very poor people. They would just take off their clothes and say, here. <laughs> <laughs> the boats, before they can even begin their journey, most of the boats just broke to pieces. <laughs> too many people so they just gave them another piece of clothes they they didn't think now what they were determined the Lord's mercy was upon them Vidya Vajaspati knowing that, that these people were all coming to his house he arranged all these big boats And when the big boats came, so many people got on them, they all fell to pieces. So the people, by so many creative ways, some of them took a clay pot and kept the opening of the clay pot up so it would be hollow. Then they tied themselves to the clay pot (laughs) and floated across the river. Others took the trunks of banana trees that were already you know, broken down from everybody trampling and they tied them together and held on to them to float across. Some swam across. Many. They didn't know how to swim. <laughs> they were so enthusiastic to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that they forgot that they didn't know how to swim. (laughs) They swam across the mighty current of Mother Ganga, about a mile wide. Out of these hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, lakhs and lakhs, not a single person drowned. You know why? Vrindavan Das Thakur tells. Because every single person was totally drowning in the joy of the expectation and anticipation of worshipping Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When they all came to the house of Vidya Vachaspati, they begged him. <laughs> Little at a time, one by one, they were coming to Vidya Vachaspati. They said, we, we, are, we heard that Lord Chaitanya has come. He's come back to Navadvi. Please let us see him. Please let us see him. And Vidya Vachaspati was so happy. He would welcome them. He told Lord Chaitanya, many people are here. And all of them knew. There's nothing that pleases the Lord more than the congregational chanting. With Krishna, 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 
the massive crowds of people, every type of person, with great, great longing to see the Lord, they raised their arms, they were chanting louder and louder and louder, knowing that the Lord's presence is only when he reveals himself. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard the loud chanting of the holy name, he appeared. He got on the roof of the house of Vidyava Chaspati. When they saw his beautiful golden form, arms that extended below his knees, his wonderful lotus-like eyes, describes that his neck was like that of a lion, his shoulders were like that of an elephant. He was the supreme object of beauty. His nose was like a sesame flower. His lips were red like the bimba fruit. His teeth were like row of pearls. His eyebrows were like the bows of Cupid. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw them all. In great compassion, tears flooded his lotus-like eyes. And he raised his arms and invited everyone to chant the holy names. People were so eager to see him. And because the crowds were so big, they would climb the trees. <laughs> dozens and dozens and dozens of people would climb the same tree. <laughs> there were many people on the same branch of the tree. Sometimes hundreds of people were on the same tree. And they weren't even big trees. But by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not a single branch of a single tree broke. And there were many houses around. And suddenly hundreds, thousands of people would get on the roof of the same house. In Vidyanagar, Mayapur in those days, they didn't have like architectural engineers making houses. With It was just straw huts. <laughs> Most of the houses were simple mud or straw. And there were hundreds of people on the roof. They, were, they didn't think what's, what's safe and what's not safe. Not a single roof of a single house collapsed. Everyone, practically without even blinking, their eyes were glued upon the magnificent, magnanimous, golden form of Lord Goranga. With great love and compassion from his heart, he gave them all a message. He said, always chant the holy names of Krishna. Worship Krishna. Continuously hear the pastimes and teachings of Krishna. Make Krishna the very treasure, the greatest of all treasures in your life. In this way, they all took those instructions as their life and souls loudly, in great joy. With one heart, with one voice, they filled the universe with the holy name. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
wanted to be alone. The crowds were enormous. Mystically, he disappeared. He just wasn't there anymore. Only his most intimate devotees like Lord Nityananda Prabhu, they disappeared with him. Suddenly Vidya Vachaspati saw, he's gone. Where is he? He was feeling immense separation. He was looking in all directions. He was asking people. He couldn't find him anywhere. His heart was shattered. Meanwhile, the people, they came to the realization, our Nimai, he's not here anymore. Where is he? He must be hiding in the house of Vidya Vajaspati. They said that they were coming one by one. They said, nobody else knows I'm coming to see you, Vidya Vajaspati. We know the Lord is hiding in your house and we know that you are hiding him. Just let me only in. <laughs> One after another and after another. Vidya Vachaspati said, he's not in my house. I looked everywhere. I don't know where he is. He said, we don't believe you. <laughs> Soon, so many people. They were accusing Vidya Vachaspati. How could you be like this? You are so selfish. You are enjoying the beautiful form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu serving him, being in his association. You don't care about us. You're supposed to be a Brahmin. A Brahmin is merciful to others. You have no mercy. Even a common, decent person, if he buys a large quantity of sweets, he doesn't eat them all himself. He distributes them but you have no decency. <laughs> he said, no, I don't know where he is. He's not here. And soon, these massive crowds were chanting, Vidya Vachaspati's a liar. He was, he was brokenhearted himself because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left him and now he's been called a liar and selfish. He was in great distress. He, st he didn't know what to do. He didn't know where to go. A Brahmin, mysterious Brahmin, whispered in his ear, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has gone to Kulia. You can take this information and do anything you want with it. <laughs> Then the Brahmin disappeared. <laughs> Vidya Vachaspati was very happy. He went out to the crowds who were all saying, Vidya Vachaspati, we want to see Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I know you all think I'm a liar and you don't think I'm a bona fide Brahmin, but I can tell you he was never hiding in my house. He has gone to Kulia. Now let us all go to Kulia. <laughs> they started running to Kulia. <laughs> as they were approaching with every step the crowd was getting bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> they had to cross the Ganga again <laughs> By this time, there were millions of people. And by this time, whatever boatmen survived, <laughs> they had their boats there. And people crowded on the boats, and some of them right in the middle of the Ganga, where it's very, very deep, the boat fell apart and started sinking. And just then, land appeared under their boat. They jumped off and swam, whatever way they could. 
it is described that the people swimming, the people using little pots, the people using little tree barks, the people who, whatever way they were going across the Ganga, as far as the eyes could see, you, you couldn't even see the river Ganga. All you saw was human heads. <laughs> Millions crossing the Ganga. Srila Prabhupada's beloved god brother Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Dev Maharaj describes this beautiful scene. Now they got to Kulia. Vidyava Chaspati didn't know where he was. And everyone was depending on him. They were already calling him a liar. <laughs> and now he's made a promise that he will bring them to Lord Chaitanya. So he was very, very desperately searching. <laughs> As one surrenders to me, Krishna says, I reveal myself accordingly. So within his heart... Krishna directed Vidyava Chaspati to the house of Madhava. And there he, Lord Chaitanya was inside hiding. <laughs> Vidyava Chaspati offered his Dandavat pranams. He was so happy to see Lord Chaitanya again. And he offered beautiful prayers. You're the source of everything that exists. You're the origin of all incarnations. You have spread the holy name of the Lord throughout. You have come to spread throughout the world. And you're very merciful to your devotees. Please be merciful to me. I'm very distressed. People are accusing me of being selfish, of being immoral, of being a liar, of being a bogus Brahmin. Please, at least for one second, show yourself to them to restore my, my life. So Lord Chaitanya smiled. He heard the chanting of the holy names by these by all these people and Lord Chaitanya appeared. He raised his arms and said, everyone chant, Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. They chanted. In celebration upon seeing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu among these millions of people, hundreds and hundreds of groups formed their own kirtan parties. They were chanting, and they were dancing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, and Nityananda Prabhu as well were so overwhelmed to see their enthusiasm. They joined one kirtan party after the other. Lord Goranga was dancing once again with the residents of Navadweep. Even offensive people who had no faith in him, who criticized him. Now he was dancing with them, embracing them, crying with them, chanting the holy name. Vrindavandas Thakur tells everyone who saw Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu during those days attained the perfection of liberation. It went on for several days, these kirtans. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to meet people. One Brahmin, 
approached Lord Chaitanya. He offered his Dandavat pranams with tears pouring from his eyes. From his heart of hearts, he humbly confessed that I have blasphemed, criticized repeatedly your devotees. A particular devotee of yours, I criticized him so many times, so much. I would say, what kind of Vaishnav could you be? In this age of Kali, there cannot be Vaishnav like this. You are simply a protector. You are simply a hypocrite. But after you took sannyas and left Navadweep, I realized, I realized what a Vaishnav really is and who you really are. And now my heart is plunged with regret because nothing hurts you, my Lord, more than one who criticizes your devotees. Please tell me, what can I do to liberate myself from the apparats I have committed. Lord Chaitanya smiled, a very calm, serene smile. He said, if a person drinks poison, that person will die. But if a person drinks nectar, that it will counteract the effects of the poison and give that person eternal life. When one's mouth and tongue engage in criticizing Vaishnavas with a selfish or arrogant purpose, it's drinking poison. The only, there's nothing you could do to free yourself of that offense unless you drink the nectar of chanting the names, pastimes, and glories of Krishna. And use the same tongue that has blasphemed the devotees, use that tongue to glorify the devotees. Simply do this. Worship and glorify and serve Krishna and the Vaishnavas. And all your offenses will be nullified and liberation and love for Krishna will come to you by Krishna's grace. That instruction is not only for that Brahman. That instruction is for all people for all times. There's nothing that pleases the Lord more than when we chant his names and glories and appreciate, glorify his devotees. From a distance, there was another Brahman. His name, Devananda Pandit. He was offering his obeisances. He was very shy and felt completely unqualified to come before Lord Chaitanya. But Lord Chaitanya saw him and he said, Devananda, please come. You have served Vakreshwar Pandit. Because you have served Vakreshwar Pandit, I am so fortunate I am seeing you today. The story of Devananda Pandit, in brief, he was the most famous re- teacher of the Srimad Bhagavatam in all of Navadvip, the highest place of learning for all of the world. But many years before, he had committed an offense to Srivas. And he allowed his students 
to make an even a bigger offense to Srivas. Because of that, he could not truly understand anything of the Srimad Bhagavatam. He thought he knew it. He thought he was the authority. And all the students and so many of the people of Navad we've considered, he is the authority of Srimad Bhagavatam. But he couldn't understand the truth of who Krishna was or what Bhakti was. Because it could be only understood when it's revealed to you by Krishna's grace. In the past, Lord Chaitanya chastised him from a distance. And Devananda Pandit would always keep his distance from Lord Chaitanya. He could never appreciate him. He had no faith in him. But then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left Navadvip and took sannyas. And one day, by the will of Providence, Vakreshwar Pandit one of the most intimate, dear, loving associates of Lord Chaitanya, came to the house of Devananda Pandit. And somehow or other, because Vakreshwar Pandit had such humility, such compassion, such deep love, Devananda Pandit invited him to stay in his house. Vakreshwar Pandit, when he would perform kirtan, crowds would come. And Devananda Pandit, to protect him with a stick, he would go in circles around Vakreshwar Pandit to make sure nobody interfered with his dancing. And sometimes when Vakreshwar Pandit, in his ecstasy of Nam Sankirtan, he would fall unconscious, Devananda Pandit would catch him would clean, he would clean Vakreshwar Pandit's body of the dust of his feet and his limbs and he would take that dust with great faith and smear it upon his head because he served a devotee, because he appreciated a devotee, he was completely transformed. In the association of Vakreshwar Pandit, Devananda Pandit developed complete faith that Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But it was grieving his heart that he had been so offensive toward him. And he was teaching Srimad Bhagavatam in a completely misleading way. He felt very, very terrible. And now Lord Chaitanya had returned to Navadweep. Lord Chaitanya called him. He said, because you have served and appreciated my devotee, Vakreshwar Pandit, therefore I bestow all my mercy upon you. Vakreshwar Pandit His heart is Krishna's favorite place to reside. Wherever Vakreshwar Pandit dances in Kirtan, and whenever it may be, Lord Krishna personally dances in that time and that place. Wherever Vakreshwar Pandit resides, wherever he may be, even for a moment, all the holy places of pilgrimage are manifest in that place. In fact, wherever Vakreshwar Pandit is, is the supreme spiritual abode of the Lord Vaikunda. Because you have served Vakreshwar Pandit, because he has bestowed his mercy upon you, You are blessed by Krishna. Devananda Pandit, upon hearing this blessing, his heart was exploding with ecstasy of love for Krishna. 
he understood that Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself. He asked Lord Chaitanya, I'm renowned everywhere for reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, but now I understand that all I've been saying all these years has not been the right thing. And the, what is the spirit and the knowledge in which Srimad Bhagavatam should be spoken? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told that every single sentence of the Srimad Bhagavatam has one subject pure unalloyed devotion to Sri Krishna. <coughs> bhakti, pure bhakti is the supreme ultimate truth, the conclusion of all the Vedas. When this entire cosmic manifestation is annihilated, the only thing that exists is pure bhakti. To spread this pure bhakti, the Lord incarnates in many various ways. He came as Matsya, Kurma, Varaha. He came as Ram. He came as Krishna. And similarly, the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna has incarnated in this world in the age of Kali as the Srimad Bhagavatam. Veda Vyas was sitting in Badrik Ashram on the banks of the Saraswati River after writing so many of the Vedic literatures. The four Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas, the Mahabharata, the Itihastas, the Samhitas. But his heart was not satisfied until it was revealed to him that he must write the Srimad Bhagavatam the Paramhamsa Samhita, the Amalam Puranam. The very commentary of the essence of all Vedic knowledge, the Brahma Sutra. Srimad Bhagavatam is saturated with Krishna Prem. Wherever you are and whoever you're with, Describe Srimad Bhagavatam in this way. And you'll, Krishna will bless you with his ecstatic love. In this way, so many of the devotees came to meet Lord Chaitanya Navadweep, and so many of the offenders came to Kulia. Gopal Chapala he had leprosy because he offended Srivas Thakur. For many years he was suffering and it was a very severe case of leprosy that, that inflicted unbearable pain upon him 24 hours a day. He really learned his lesson. He tried to destroy the honor and dignity of Srivas Pandit to the public. He was rejected by society due to his infectious leprosy. Now, from a little distance, he was offering his obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He understood his offense. He was begging for mercy. He was admitting how fallen he was, saying, please be merciful to me. I'm suffering so bad. And I deserve all the suffering I'm having, but I'm now surrendering to you. Please forgive me. Please be merciful. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has his unique way of showing his mercy. Sometimes he's soft like a rose, sometimes hard like a thunderbolt. He looked at Gopal Chapala and he said, You are asking to be cured of your leprosy? This is only a sample. I've given you this suffering of 24-hour misery ever increasing of leprosy just to prepare you for the miseries you will be inflicted upon you after you die. You will go to a hell where Yamaraj will use all his forces to make you suffer even worse. Endlessly. 
get out from my sight. I don't even want to see you. Gopal Chapala. He expressed, I know I deserve this. I surrender. Then Lord Chaitanya said, the only one who can heal you is Srivas. He's a merciful, loving Vaishnav. He's the one you offended. Go to him. Gopal Chapala went to Srivas Thakur. Srivas Thakur had been praying for him. But you see, when you offend great souls like Srivas, even if they're praying for you, even if they're begging Krishna to, to bless you, until you have a humble heart seeking forgiveness, those blessings cannot really take effect on you. Durvasamuni, the whole time he was trying to escape the Sudarshan Chakra, Ambarish Maharaj was praying for his well-being. He was praying to Krishna, forgive him, give him, give him ecstatic love. But it wasn't until he returned to Ambarish Maharaj that Maharaj Ambarish's prayers actually fructified. Srivas Thakur lifted up Gopal Chapala with a loving, compassionate heart and embraced him. Gopal Chapala was completely cured of leprosy. He had a beautiful, healthy form. He went back to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and now he had attained ecstatic love for Krishna. Now his only purpose in life was to serve the devotees, to share Krishna praying with the world, and to chant the holy names. In this way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed his mercy upon all people, especially materialistic offensive people in the land of Kulia. It was a great celebration. Mahaprabhu returned to Navadweep. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he has written a beautiful prayer The prayer, he's taking the role of one of the residents of Navadweep, who would have kirtan at the house of Srivas with Lord Sri Chaitanya. And after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and left Navadweep, all of those people were in deep, deep separation from him. After five years, as a resident of Navadvi, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is seeing Lord Chaitanya standing upon the roof of Vidyava Chaspati's house. He's comparing that experience to the residents of Vrindavan seeing Krishna in Kurukshetra. Krishna lived in Vrindavan for about ten and a half years. Then he left for Mathura and later to Dwarka. The residents of Vrindavan were experiencing the highest, most intimate state of love in the Virahabhav the mood of separation, where the love of their heart went deeper and deeper and deeper to the very core of their hearts. 
24 hours a day they could only remember Krishna. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami said, when Krishna left Vrindavan, the residents of Vrindavan cried for the rest of their lives. Now materialists, materially this sounds pretty sad, but spiritually, Krishna within their hearts was manifesting and embracing them most intimately. Punchari Kalota Baba at Govardhan, when he saw Krishna leaving with Balaram on the chariot of Akrura, he, he called out to Krishna and Balaram, I have prepared prasad for you today. You're supposed to come and accept my prasad. Krishna said, I have to go to Mathura. He said, no, no, please come and at least take prasad first. And Krishna said, I will come back after some days. Pundrika Lota Baba, who's a coward boy, a gopa, he said, I will stand here and I will fast until you return. It's one of the most popular temples for the Brijabhasis and all of Brajbhumi. He's still standing, waiting for Krishna to return. But the amazing thing, if you look at the deity, He's very heavy in size. Usually if you fast for hundreds of years, you become very thin. But every day he was getting fatter. Because he's, Krishna in his heart is reciprocating with him. In that mood of love and separation, he's being nourished. During the solar eclipse, Krishna invited the Brijabhasis to meet him in Kurukshetra. After so many years of separation, their anticipation was beyond comprehension. They loaded their oxen carts, their bullocks, and traveled to Kurukshetra. At every moment, awaiting the sight of Krishna. Yuga ayatam nameshena chakshusha pravrishayatam sunyayatam jagat saravam govinda virahename. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood of the residents of Vrindavan, the gopis. A moment separation from you is like a yuga thousands of years. The gopis would criticize Lord Brahma. You're the creator. Why are you so imperfect in your creation (laughs) that you made these eyelids? This is when they're with Krishna, personally. When our eyes blink, we don't see Krishna. So many of us are blinking now, we don't even know that we're blinking. (laughs) Srila Prabhupada explains the time of a blink when the eye closes is nimesh in Sanskrit. It's one twelfth of a second. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining this mood of separation. Even this nimesh, it seems like the duration of time of a full yuga to make it understandable to people all over the world, Srila Prabhupada translated it as 12 years or more. A yuga is much more. (laughs) So amazing. And look, Krishna was now away from Vrindavan for many years. How is it that they didn't die in separation? His Holiness Gorgovinda Maharaj gives a beautiful explanation. Krishna promised he would return. 
And that promise, that hope that he would come back was the only thing that kept them alive. He gives the example, they were like animals in a house that was on fire and they wanted to get out but the door was bolted lock. Similarly, the body is like the house and the soul is like the animal. And the separation from Krishna is like the fire. And we just want to get out of this body. But the promise that Krishna made that he would return is like the lock that keeps them in that house. They can't escape. That was the mood of the Brijabhasis. And finally, after a long time, they came. They came to Kurukshetra. They're going to see Govinda again. But when they saw him, he didn't have a peacock feather over his beautiful curling hair. He had a crown. He didn't have his Vajayanti Mala, a wild forest flowers around his neck. He had the armor of a prince. He wasn't on the bank of the Yamuna near the Kadamba trees with the birds singing. He was surrounded by kings, militaries, elephants, horses, chariots rattling, majestic, beautiful, Queen 16,108. The Brijabhasis, especially the Gopis, especially Srimati Radharani, their hearts were broken to see Krishna like this. Yes, you are the same Krishna. And I am the same Radharani. And these are the same moonlit nights of the month of Chaitra. But I want to take you back to the forest of Vrindavan. Because that is where you are the most happy. My heart is Vrindavan. Please come back to Vrindavan. Save our lives. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is giving this comparison. As a resident of Navadweep, which is not different than Vrindavan, after many years of separation, he's finally seeing Lord Chaitanya again. But he's in the garb of a sannyasi. Please come back across the river to Sri Vasangam. Take off your sannyasi garb. (laughs) Grow your hair again. (laughs) And let us dance and chant all night long. Kirtan at the house of Srivas was non different than the Ras than the Rasa Lila of Sri Vrindavan. In fact, Srivas Angam is the Rasa Stali of Sri Navadweep. Thakur Bhakti Vinod has given us this beautiful meditation. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left Kuliagram on his way to Vrindavan, the crowd was growing bigger and bigger. One brahmachari of the name Narasinghananda, he wanted to offer seva. 
he had no money. He didn't have any great material skills. But he did have the aspiration to serve. He sat down in meditation. And in that meditation, he was landscaping (laughs) all the areas around the road that Lord Chaitanya would be walking. And he renovated the road. He widened the road so that all the devotees could fit nicely and so that Lord Chaitanya's feet would feel very happy. He lined, he completely paved the road with precious jewels. Then he took fragrant flower petals and made a thick bed over the whole road of jewels so that it would be soft for Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet to please his eyes all of his senses on both sides of the road the most auspicious trees with fragrant flowers with bees humming with auspicious birds chirping he excavated wonderful lake with nectar water filled with lotus flowers. He did one meter at a time. It wasn't that he just, okay, a road. (laughs) He was actually placing in his mind each jewel, one at a time at a time, putting putting the flowers on it. He was doing the seva, he was doing the work. Every step at a time, he was creating the lakes and the trees. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Bhavagrahi Janardana. He sees our love. This is the very, very essence of bhakti. That Krishna reciprocates with our love. Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakta prayachchati. Even if we offer a flower or a fruit or a little water, Krishna will accept it if it's offered with love. Lord Chaitanya, wherever he was looking as he was walking and dancing and chanting, he was seeing the jewels, he was seeing the flowers, he was seeing the lakes and the trees and hearing the birds and the bees. Another Singananda suddenly he couldn't make the road any further. As much as he was trying, he couldn't do it. He came out of his meditation and told the devotees of Navadweep, Lord Chaitanya will not go to Vrindavan. He will go as far as Kanai Natashala, because that's as far as I can make the road. And then he will turn back. Devotees couldn't understand this. But at the same time, they could understand. Narasikananda is such a great devotee. What he says must be true. But how is this? Lord Chaitanya is so enthusiastic. He's longing to go to Vrindavan. Why will he not go to Vrindavan? Now it is time for the Rajbog Arti of Sri Sri Nitai Chandra on the day of Gaur Purnima. So we will have Arti. And then we will continue Lord Chaitanya's journey to Vrindavan. Srila Prabhupada Kijai.